Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. I look real casual because I feel real casual. This is a real casual video. <laughs> Today I'm here to do the on the chopping block video that I said I was going to do featuring Mood Cielago by Yoshi Muda Kana. Did I actually say their name correctly? Yeah! I currently own volumes 1 through 9 of this series and just to give a little backstory I started reading this series in 2017 I <laughs> I was on a hunt for some explicit content I remember specifically being at a books not books man I remember specifically being at a Barnes and Noble in Oklahoma City with one of my friends and I was telling her that you know it's hard to find content, explicit content with grown people. And um, while we were there, we discovered that <laughs> explicit content tends to be wrapped in plastic wrap, not all the time, but a lot of the time at places like Barnes and Noble, they will um, wrap their explicit content manga in plastic wrap. So. Uh, while I was there, I started looking for things wrapped in plastic wrap. And I would look at the back of the book to see what it was about, mostly because I was looking to make sure that it wasn't set in high school because while I am not against explicit content with high schoolers, ow, I just hit my nail on the wall. <laughs> I am personally against reading it myself because I'm old. I don't feel like I need to say that again. I mean, I have a whole video Oh crap, is it? I have a whole video that'll pop up probably here. I'm looking and I end up coming across volume one of Mood Cielago and I saw that it was explicit. I read the back of it and here's, I'm gonna read the back of this so that y'all know why I got excited. Mass murderer Kuroko Komori has two passions in life, taking lives and pleasuring ladies. Y'all, when I, when I read just that sentence, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pick this up. Read the first volume, absolutely loved it. I was shook. I went into it knowing that Kudoko was not a good person, good person, um, that she has done some terrible things, but I also found her intriguing and at times endearing, although I kept in my mind that you know, she's, she's a murderer, but it was just so much fun getting to know her and then meeting different characters along the way that all have very um, shifty pasts. Some of them are more ridiculous than others, but none of the characters that you meet throughout this series are quote unquote good people. And one of my favorite things about this series is that it does point out that people in general have the capacity to do both horrible things and really great things, really good things. Uh, you can be a murderer and also have a found family that you wake up and you cook for and you're wearing a cute little apron. Like Kuroko literally takes care of the people that live with her in her little apartment. And it's so interesting to see that and I will I will give the mangaka props for not necessarily glorifying these atrocities that happen like they don't make it seem like oh this is cool you should do this and it really for me brings across the point that like I said earlier you can as a person do some really awful things you can also do some good things some people who know you as one thing are gonna know you as that and people who know you as something else are gonna know you as that rereading this from the beginning reminded me of why i really liked this story um i i loved the over the top uh, that is Kuroko and her gang. Each story arc has a mystery and Kuroko is basically supposed to find out who this bad guy is and defeat the bad guy of the story arc. And I loved like the Yuri aspect of it. it so good. <laughs> I had so much fun rereading it until volume six. This entire volume is the school destruction arc. <sighs> it 
centers a lot around um, high school bullying. There is a girl that is bullied, and I don't want to give anything away just in case y'all do decide that you want to read this series, but um, it's just, it was just a very disturbing uh, <laughs> story arc for me. It was hard to read things that happened were really hard to read, and that's saying a lot considering how gruesome and ridiculous this series is. And also, the sexual content mixed in with it, I just, I, I, don't, I don't like this volume. Volume 7 is the Sakura of Oblivion arc, and I want to say this arc runs also through volume 8. And it finally ends in volume nine. This is, I'm pretty sure, the longest story arc so far. And I didn't like it. I was like, oh my gosh, how long is this story arc going to go? And then when you get to the end of the story arc, the bad guy's reasoning was so stupid. <laughs> At this point, I was getting, I was just really, losing interest. I will say that there are certain characters in here that I absolutely love and I enjoyed getting to see a little bit more of them, but it still didn't make the overall story arc any that much better for me, I guess. And then we get into volume nine and that particular story arc, Sakura of Oblivion, finally ends. And the way it ends, it's just dumb. I don't know how else to describe it. It's dumb. The fact that two whole volumes and a portion of one ends with the bad guy um, explaining why he did all of this and it's the stupidest reason. I, I find it so st It's just dumb. Like, I had to sit through two full volumes of this convoluted, ridiculous story arc only to find out that the reason was what it was. I almost think that the focus of the story arc was really supposed to be these little things that you learn about certain characters. Um, it's connecting certain characters together and giving you a like hints into their backstory. Maybe that's what it was about. But it was annoying for me to read two whole volumes of that and then get a really awful climax. <laughs> so then in chapter nine, uh, we finally get a new story arc, which is called White Meteor. Y'all, I hated that one even more than I hated Sakura of Oblivion. The White Meteor story arc is annoying to me because things happen that feel like they came out of nowhere. You're introduced to certain things that weren't hinted at throughout the rest of the series. The existence of this type of technology was not hinted at throughout the rest of the series, except for there is one thing with one character who gets some like super powered skates. And somehow we're supposed to believe that the same person who made these super power skates also made the things that you meet in volume nine. I was just like, what, how, how? It took me out of the story because the whole time I was reading it, I kept wondering if I missed something, like did I need to go back and reread again? Because what the heck, where did this come from? This is so ridiculous. And I read a lot of over the top things. I read a lot of fiction. I can suspend disbelief. Like I have no problem with doing that. But I still need those unbelievable things to make sense for the world in which they exist and it just no I don't regret collecting what I have so far especially the first five volumes they're so good I could see myself rereading those again volume six I would honestly just kind of skim through skip over because uh, it's too much for me um, and then seven eight nine I, eh. If I were you, I wouldn't go out and buy all of the volumes at once. Just take it a volume at a time, read the first one, see how you feel about it, maybe get the second one in the next month or so. Like, I know everyone's manga budget is different. I'm gonna be honest and say that I don't really have a budget. I just kind of buy what I want when I want, um, and our, you know, our, our things are paid for 
Uh, so it's, it's good. If space is an issue for you, I would highly recommend that you pick it up digitally. It's on Comixology. Um, you can also buy it for your Kindle. I'm sure there are other apps that you can use that are legal. I don't really know about them because I only use um, my Kindle for digital stuff. I'm trying to, I'm, pl I'm playing around with the idea of looking into other apps, but um, I don't know if Yen Press even has an app where you can read digital manga legally, but I'm sure there's one out there somewhere for y'all. There is a chance that I may end up either selling or giving away these first nine volumes and then just reading the series on my Kindle. It's an enjoyable series, but man, volume nine just messed me up. It was just not good. <laughs> it's just not what I wanted. So yeah, that's really all I have to say. I suppose I can show you some art in case you're curious. The art, in my opinion, on this series is actually perfect for the subject matter. It's very detailed and gruesome. Like you, you get to see, oof, if, if you can't handle extreme violence, I would not recommend this series at all. Like it's, it's very extreme. People get like ripped in half, chopped in half. But I do really like how on the one hand, um, Yoshi Murakana can draw some scary looking stuff, but then they turn around and draw like the cutest, most adorable little characters. Like Hinako right here, she's so stinking adorable. She's really dumb, <laughs> but also adorable. Honestly, at this point, I think I've talked myself into continuing it on my Kindle. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I don't know, you know what? I'll keep y'all updated. Anyway, that's all I have to say in this chopping block episode. Um, let me know if you've read this series at all and let's talk about it in the comments. I know there is at least one of y'all who also loves this series and you may be surprised by my um, feelings about it. So you know who you are. Let's talk about it in the comments because I I really want to know your opinion on volume nine. Like, cause I, what the heck? The only good thing about volume nine, in my opinion, is the beach episode. <laughs> and there was a scene between Kuroko and her, we'll call her her main chick. Um, that was that had me like, ooh, I wanna I wanna go to a beach and do that. <laughs> on that note, I'm gonna go. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> oh man. Ugh. Oh I didn't get it. Should I get it? This is, how did these get so out of order? What the heck, Asia? Girl.